Hey everyone, thanks again for tuning in to Sin's Workshop here on YouTube. Uh, I hope you guys can hear me perfectly fine. I have to have my phone plugged in for the moment because it's dying and I'm kind of short in time today. Um, lots to do, lots to do. But anyway, I hope you all are having a great day. Today we're going to be talking about Bloodleaf by Crystal Smith of The Horse in the Series. And this novel has been labeled as sort of a retelling of The Goose Girl, but I feel like it's a really loose retelling. It has elements, you know, she's forced to give up her princess identity and take on that of a servant. She has to live in hiding, she has to help save a kingdom. Yeah, there are elements of the Goose Girl in here. But I feel like it really is its own entity, it really is its own story, and not just a retelling of, you know, the Goose Girl. So. Now, let's get right into it. Uh, what I liked about this book was the world building, um, the magic, and the ghost. You know, I'm not talking about all these things separately. The world building is inter integral in this story. You know, a lot of authors just kind of use world building just to kind of set a foundation for the story um, and to, you know, just to ground the reader in this world. Uh, but here, Smith really utilizes her history. She really focuses on the history of this world to make sure that everything not just has a strong foundation, but so that the history is sort of layering in lots of tension, lots of plot twists, and lots of intrigue. There's so much intrigue, there's so much mystery, and it's all hidden in learning the history of this world. And I like how it's trickled out throughout the novel. You know, that's kind of one of my things if you um, are a subscriber, you've seen other things I hate when they just kind of like plow all the history in one small segment because it's a lot to take in. You know, when you're telling a story, you really want to keep the reader entertained. You want to keep that momentum. You want to keep that pace moving. So it really bothers me when, you know, there's like just a chunk of history because first of all, you're really slowing down the pace of a novel in my personal opinion. I think you're kind of taking away from the momentum because it's one of those like sit down moments where you sit down and you're just reading about the history of this world. Like, I, I, I don't, I'm not a fan of it, but Smith doesn't do that. She trickles it in throughout the, throughout the story because it's very integral. It is very integral and very important in for the story basically because the history it has so much plot to us it has so much there's a lot of magic here there's a lot of magic in this novel and you need that history in order to understand you know, these countries, in order to understand this one place that, you you know, Princess Eurelia is taking refuge, um, you know, it's guarded by a wall around this entire, this entire kingdom is guarded by a wall, and it's a magical wall, and all of a sudden, gates that keep it up are, you know, falling down, they are falling down, they are causing havoc, you know, crops are dying, water has become poisoning, so, there's history as to why this wall was put up. There's history as to why the magic is suddenly turning on all, all the people in the village. You know, and I think it's really important that she trickles it out throughout the novel because it does raise the tension, it does raise the stakes of the novel, and it does create this intrigue. And I appreciate that Smith was able to do that. Uh, you know, that she keeps the pacing forward, she keeps the momentum up, and I appreciate that she does it. And, you know, there it, it's it's a very steady novel, but it's a very like rising steady. Like you're you're just kind of jogging along, and then you're sprinting, and then you're just full on running. You know, it's like really it moves very steadily forward. Now, as for the magic, I really like the um the blood magic. I like this idea that for once, you know. You being a magic user doesn't make your doesn't mean you you're safe. You know, usually if you're a magic user, you're part of high society. You know, it makes you special. Not here. 
um, in your release kingdom, being a magic ruler makes you hunted. You know, it's very much akin to the Salem Witch Trials. You know, this tribunal rules through fear. Uh, it limits knowledge. And when your release power is discovered, you know, she has to flee to the kingdom that, you know, she was bound to anyway. And in order to do that, you know, you know, that's when she takes on this new identity and, and you know, forcefully, you know, she is betrayed on her way. So there's another tension. But it's in this place that she discovers her magic. You know, she doesn't really use her magic. She never really utilized it before because, well, again, using it, being discovered meant death. You know what I mean? So she never really did. And now she's in this kingdom that does accept magic, you know, and she's learning about herself. She's learning about her magic, and I like this blood magic. I like how it, it's kind of different, um, and it, the way it's connected you know, to this border is fascinating. Once again, that connects to the history. You know, you have to really read the novel to appreciate both of those aspects because they're very integral with one another, and that's what I like about this novel. Everything ties into everything else, you know, leans to making a very cohesive novel, and I appreciate that. I love cohesion in a novel, um, in storytelling, and I have to say, I like the added element of the ghosts as well. Um, usually when you read ghosts, you think paranormal fiction, you think horror fiction, you know, ghost stories. You're not really thinking this is fantasy but you know Bloodleaf kind of verges on sort of being a high fantasy novel verges not quite there but it's almost there with the storytelling and the ghosts kind of add another element of tension they add another element of intrigue and mystery to the overall plot but again it ties into everything else as well and I really like that these three elements, you know, the history, the magic, the ghost, they tie together, you know, and it leads to making a very cohesive story. And I really like that. It keeps the momentum up. It keeps the tension up. It keeps the tension rising. So you're enjoying the novel. You're enjoying the revelations that come out one after another after another because there are many revelations to the storytelling. And the rising tension is spectacular. Now, while that's all great and everything, um, I did have one minor issue with the novel. You really is a good character, don't get me wrong. I do like how she is written for the most part. Um, she's a very strong character, very strong personality. However, I feel like she's rather static. You know, she ends the way she started. There's not really a lot of character development. Um, devoted to her because she starts off and so strong. She starts off with such a direct sort of moral compass, you know. She has this plan. She needs to get this done and she does, you know. Her plans kind of shift given all the revelations throughout, but she doesn't grow, you know, and I feel like as a main protagonist, you know, we're going to be following you around. I need to see some development you know she does have inner tension you know inner turmoil there is lots of tension surrounding her but i think that's pretty much about it you know ultimately she just lacks the sort of development to make her memorable because at the end of the day i don't really feel like she's a memorable character because she's so kind of static and that's kind of my issue with this novel Ultimately, I love this novel at the end of the day. I do have to give it three and a half stars. Um, not quite four, just because I think it lacks the character growth. You know, it has strong character dynamics, it has a strong plot, it has a strong, strong premise, it has a great pace, you know. There are lots of things that are great about it, but I just didn't find the main protagonist to be that memorable to keep me really engaged. I was more engaged with the history. I was more engaged with the magic. I was more engaged with the ghosts than I was with her. 
And I feel like that was detrimental to my overall um, admiration of this novel. And so once again, this was Blood Leaf by Crystal Smith. I give it three and a half stars. If you want to go ahead and purchase the book, there will be a link in the description below to bookshop.org. Highly recommend bookshop.org because they are, they're just great. You know, a percentage of all your proceeds go to local booksellers and you can even choose your local bookstore that you would like the money to be donated to. Uh, if money is tight, which I know for a lot of us it is, go ahead and check out this book from your local library. Um, you know, libraries are a great resource and they deserve the support of their community. And please do not forget to support me by liking this video and subscribing to my channel. I hope you all have a great rest of your day and as always, happy reading!